This is Jamie Foxx. You might know him from his movie roles, or his stand-up comedy, or his funny impressions. Because you see him in a club and you see, you see some girls and you like, hi, how you doing? Or his musical talent. When you think of someone who has a personality, perhaps THE personality, an archetype of a guy like him might be the first thing that comes to your mind. But you don't have to be an incredible multi-talented superstar in order to have a personality, nor do you need to be outgoing and extroverted. You just need to figure out what I figured out in sophomore year of high school during English class. Towards the end of sophomore year, our English teacher required us to make this massive final project on the book we were reading at the time, which was Cloud Atlas. If you aren't familiar with the book, it's basically a compilation of four stories in four different eras that are all interconnected in some way. I don't remember the exact requirements for the project, but I do remember that he left us a lot of wiggle room as to what we could do in relation to the book. Immediately after hearing the requirements, I knew what I wanted to make this project about. And I thought to myself, this might just be the first school project that I'm actually passionate about. The thing I was going to revolve the project around was programming. Around this time, I started to get into programming and game development as a hobby and potential future career. I was teaching myself HTML and CSS, the languages you use to make websites, as well as some Java so I could eventually program games. And how I decided to relate programming to the book Cloud Atlas was this. In the book, every story, although much different in the way they were told and when they took place, all ended up connecting to one another. In the same way, even though virtually all programming languages use different syntax, which are the words you type in to create a program that runs something, they all produce similar outputs. I even ended up coding my own crappy web page, which I used to present the project. After spending days and days putting the project together, I practiced my presentation dozens of times at home and in front of my mom just to make sure I would smash it and really get the point across when the actual presentation day came. And when the presentation day finally came, I did, in fact, crush it. After the presentation ended, my English teacher was astonished and said something along the lines of, I think that's the first time I've been impressed by you. I was not expecting that. Yeah, he was kind of an asshole. As that day went on, during lunch, one of my friends told me what a girl in my class had said about the project as well. She said, yeah, I was honestly surprised Cole was interested in anything at all. You see, I was never a very energetic, charismatic kid in middle school and high school. To be honest, I always felt like a ghost whenever I was required to make social interaction at something like a party or even something as simple as a small get-together. I felt like I was the guy in the room that nobody remembered, and I kind of liked it that way. But what my teacher and that girl in my class said about me struck a chord in me. It made me realize how my lack of personality could actually be a huge detriment in the future to not only myself, but others. By not developing my personality and not being able to arouse and connect with people through my words and actions, it would limit the amount of opportunities I'd have to positively impact others and create meaningful relationships in my life. Not only that, but by developing more of a personality, it'd be easier to talk positively about myself and figure out what truly excites me. Over the years, I've thought about what it really means means to have a personality, and I've slowly refined that definition. And through that refinement, I've found that having more of a personality really comes down to two things, both of which were exemplified in the story of my high school presentation. Developing and strengthening your passions for things, and becoming a better storyteller. This is why I say you don't need to be an extrovert or be super sociable and outgoing in order to have a personality. I'm an introvert myself. So let's go over the first one, the one that I realized after I had that presentation in English class. Developing passions and interests for things. Before I had gotten into programming, I'd say my biggest passion in life was playing video games. Because I didn't like my classes, I played some sports but was never super passionate about any of them, and I just didn't really have any sort of standout qualities. Like, I kind of just blended in. Now you might be saying right now, well, Cole, I have no passion and I'm not really interested in anything. You just got lucky early on in life. Two things come to mind here if you're thinking this. Number one is that you're probably just a little too young. It's rare that a young person has gone through enough and seen enough or learned enough to develop huge interests in anything because not only is your brain not fully developed yet and you don't even know who you are, but also you've basically just been in school your whole life forced to take classes on a bunch of things you don't necessarily find interesting. And the second thing that comes to mind is the biggest hoax the self-improvement space has ever told you that you're probably leaning on to say something like that to me. And that is the term, find your passion. You think you have to find your passion, and you think that's what happened to me. 
This is complete bullshit. You make your passion. When I first started my YouTube channel, I was not that passionate about it. I barely knew what I was doing, and it was more so seen as a fun hobby that could potentially turn into something bigger. And that was because I hadn't yet invested enough time into it in order to see considerable progress in it. I knew that I really enjoyed the process of making videos, but once I saw that I was getting better at it, and there was so much more I could accomplish with it, that is when YouTube started to become a passion for me. If you want to develop your personality, you have to put time and effort into one or more skills to the point where you have a lot of knowledge in that thing and you're passionate about that thing. Without becoming deeply interested in things and curious about things, you'll never really have the energy to present things in a charismatic way or develop a skill to the point where you have a lot to say about it. If you don't know where to start with this, all I can say is just start doing something that seems even remotely interesting to you and do it for long enough to the point where you see progress in it. You don't have to become the most interesting person in the world by doing a bunch of different things, just start by doing one thing and doing it long enough to the point where you can really speak about that thing with a high energy output with your chest held high. When you do this, you'll find that something very peculiar starts to happen. Because you felt what it's like to be passionate towards something in life, you become more passionate about hearing what makes other people passionate and what they find interesting, and you start to care more about what they say. Which I've mentioned in previous videos is fundamental to becoming a better conversationalist. And this is why I say developing a personality is a benefit to both yourself and others. When people see you're passionate about something, it's contagious. They want to talk about and strengthen their interests too. What's also extremely important to mention is that some people are just going to be naturally better at bringing out more of your personality than other people, and that's totally okay. Don't stress too much over that. And if you can, try to hang out with those people that bring out more of your personality more. Now, even if you're extremely passionate about something, if you don't know how to communicate that thing physically and verbally, you won't be able to make others understand that thing or even fully understand that thing yourself. This is where the second factor to developing a personality comes in. Storytelling. Stories are how we make sense of the world. Without them, we wouldn't have a memorable way to clearly conceptualize our surroundings and put the pieces of existence together in a coherent format. They're how we connect and relate to others and spark emotions in people, and they're how we come to develop our own self-awareness too. When people tell stories, instead of just spit logical facts and numbers out of their mouth, we are much more likely to be captivated and intrigued by what they say and remember what they say. This is why all of the best TED talks and comedians are also the best storytellers. Being able to present yourself, what you've gone through, and how things work through stories, I believe is one of the most important skills for you to develop to enhance the quality of your life. And to explain how to do so, I'm going to tell you a fictional story. There was once a young lost man who didn't know who he was or what he liked and had low confidence. It was apparent that this was the case because the current predicament he found himself in was laying in bed, scrolling through his YouTube recommended, disappointed with himself after an embarrassing night at his friend's house. That night was so disappointing because he finally mustered up the courage to talk to his crush and it didn't go so well. After they exchanged a few opening words, she asked him what the craziest risk he ever decided to take was. What immediately popped into his mind was the time he decided to jump the fence at Coachella when he was almost blackout drunk in front of several security guards and how he spent a night in jail because of it. But when he tried to recall the story of that night, he couldn't really piece it together in words. And so the conversation ended up fizzling out. After reflecting and getting upset about that night once again, he finally decided to do some research on becoming a better storyteller. And he came across a video by Cole Hastings, which was how to develop a personality. Once he got to the part in the video where Cole explained how to be a good storyteller, Cole told him the first key to a good story. Some background context. The story that Cole was in the middle of telling provided some context as to who this young man was, what he had gone through, and what he was trying to accomplish. He also added in some relatability, tension, and conflict by talking about a guy who messed up with a girl he liked, which allowed the audience to get even more hooked on what could happen. Cole then told him to start studying and watching the world's best speakers and storytellers, which just so happened to be comedians. He told the people watching the YouTube video to notice how the comedians talked and the
the sort of body language they gave off, and to carefully analyze the way in which they broke down the stories these comedians told. And the young man noticed that, along with giving some good background context and adding tension, they always had a great way of describing things in detail and over-exaggerating things such as how a person looks using vivid characteristics. As he learned this, the boy's eyes started to light up like a Christmas tree that had too much voltage powered into it, like that one scene in National Lampoon. See, I just did it right there. The next thing Cole told him to do was to create a daily story diary. He explained it as follows. Every day, pick one thing that stuck out that day and write a short 200 word story on that thing. It could be something as insignificant as a bug that flew on your desk that pissed you off. The purpose of this practice was to flex those storytelling muscles and train them on a consistent basis. After that, Cole told him to start reading fiction books to improve his vocabulary and to start to get a better understanding of how words should flow in a story. And lastly, and maybe most importantly, Cole told him to practice telling stories out loud, whether that was in the mirror by himself, with friends, or his parents, just like how Cole did when he was preparing for his English presentation. The young man took in the advice and decided he was going to actually apply it, unlike most people who watch self-improvement videos. He watched different comedians, did the storytelling practice, as many days as he could, read many of Cole's favorite fiction books, which Cole left linked in the description, and started practicing his verbal skills and body language in front of a camera and a mirror. Because Cole told him that much of his charisma and communication skills came from talking to a camera for YouTube over the years. At first, it felt really awkward and unlike himself. But then he remembered Cole had told him that this was part of the process of developing things with yourself that you weren't previously used to. He said it was part of the process of bringing out a certain characteristic in you that you hadn't yet had access to. After several weeks of doing so, it just so happened that another party was coming up this weekend, and the girl he had embarrassed himself in front of was planning on attending. As the night of the party arrived, and he approached the door of his friend's house, he felt the nerves in every part of his body activate, his palms shaking, and that warm feeling rushed through his skull like he was about to make a fool of himself. But then, he remembered what he had practiced and what Cole told him. He knew that even if he failed, it would be a great learning experience to actually apply all this stuff in real life, and that by constantly exposing himself to social interactions, he would get to the point he wanted to eventually. After a couple hours, he finally decided to approach the girl, and told her, Hey, you remember what you asked me last time we saw each other? I think I recall it better now. And as he told the story of that night at Coachella, the words flew out of his mouth as smooth as butter. He had become a better storyteller. The end. Now, go back and re-listen to this story again if you missed all the things I used to tell this story, as well as what I told this young boy to study and practice. Because the answers are there. Thank you to all my patrons on Patreon. If you don't know what this is, it's a platform separate from YouTube where you can get exclusive content from me you can't find anywhere else, and you can talk to me one-on-one -on -one over the phone on there. If you want to check that out, link in the description. If you want to learn more about building relationships with others and becoming a better conversationalist, check out this entire playlist I've made about it. That will help you a ton more than this video. I am signing out. Love you guys. Peace.